event. So happy Thursday, November 5th here on the East Coast. It is 8 p.m. My name is Whitney or Whit. I'm in North Carolina. Um, I've been with a company for about 10 years. I teach the GRE and the GMAT and I am super excited to be here. Tonight's plan, um, a lot of folks and a lot of my students keep asking about it and um, looking for ways to improve on vocabulary-based questions. And so you asked, I answer. We're gonna try and answer three major questions tonight. Um, these are the three things that you need to be able to, to sort of point to and understand on test day in order to be able to get text completion and sentence equivalence questions right. So you have to be able to say, what is the big picture of this sentence or set of sentences? Okay, so I see a TC or SE question. I have to know what the author is trying to convey as like an overarching meaning. I then need to be able to make a prediction for the blanks as best as possible, right? That's gonna be our goal tonight. There are some really great free prep hour videos that talk about some advanced techniques, um, especially for things like sentence equivalents. But for tonight, we're gonna to really focus on this like serious like underpinning skill, which is predicting what's gonna go into the blanks. And then we have to know what in the world a lot of the words mean. So we do have to study vocab, right? For better or for worse. So we're gonna to talk tonight about some um, what I think are kind of the best ways or the best way to study vocab. So all this is going to begin with a single question, with a single question. So here's what I'd like for you guys to do. I want you to take a read. I'm not so worried about the blank. What I would like for you to do is tell me what do you think, right? The, the meaning of the sentence as a whole is trying to convey in simple words. And I want you to type those to me directly, right? In simple words, what is this sentence trying to say? Okay, so I'm starting to get some predictions for the blank itself, right? And that's beautiful, right? That's beautiful. I, though, want to take a step back and I want to think about meaning for the whole sentence. Right? So our author here is saying that some sort of behavior against China's record on environmental protection has become an, a ubiquitous pastime at summits, especially among those who are already inclined to, to be some certain way about these topics. So a big issue with the sentence is that I'm going to have to know some of the vocab right from the beginning, right from the beginning. And so if you find that the majority of at least the initial issue with these vocab based questions is the vocabulary itself, then what I wanna encourage you to do, and we're gonna see it in just a minute, is start to amass a vocabulary before you start practicing too many of these questions. So you might spend two to three weeks even just really hammering vocab flashcards, which again, we'll see in just a second, um, but work on those and then start to work on actual practice questions. And I love this. I love um, Danielle saying in the chat window to me, and I've got like Lucienne and Nima are saying things like critical judgment. Um, and then Danielle adds this like, well, maybe what's in the blank is at least negative. And that's wonderful, right? Like even if I can start to figure out that, the sentence is saying something sort of negative in general. It seems to be saying that this ubiquitous meaning like everywhere, everyone all the time, that doing something about, or like saying something about China's record has become this like popular pastime at these energy summits, especially among those already inclined to invective. And that means to like bad mouth, right? Use harsh language. 
And so it sounds like saying something negative about China's record has become this like popular thing to do, particularly for those people who like to just be really negative about such things. So once I have the big picture, I now figure out exactly where that blank fits, right? And so something against their record on protection, okay. It might be, it, it's probably something negative. So step one, I need to make sure I understand what the sentence is even saying. That's gonna help me understand if there are vocab words in my way. The second thing I need to do is at least begin to come up with a prediction for that blank. And it might be as sort of broad as Daniel's suggestion of negative, right? Doing something negative. Or if we start to see that there's this idea of like being critical or being judgmental, you know, like what, what is it, right? Like something negative. Okay, so once we think we have a word, what we'll do in next is like actually look at our answer choices. From our answer choices, right? Like we're then gonna see, does, do any of these fit into the blank, right? So A, B, C, D, E, I want you guys to think about it. Don't type it yet. You can type it, but don't hit enter yet. <clears throat> but I want you guys to guess what word you think is the correct word for this blank. And then go for it. Go ahead and hit enter if you've picked an answer already and let's see. Nice, looking good, looking good. And so I wanna steal a little bit from Danielle's playbook. Once we get to the words, um, we don't have to deal with them in order, <clears throat> right? We don't have to do them in order. What we're looking for are easier, or at least easy for us, words to eliminate. So are any of these words the opposite of what we would want? Because that's often something I look for is that if I think the word's negative, I'm gonna toss out anything that I think is positive. So is there anything here that would be positive? Mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody that's lauding, right, is positive. That means to like be giving praise to. So that's gonna be positive, that's not what we want, okay? Um, we've got a few negative ones. Needling is kind of negative. Needling would be like teasing or, you know, like provoking, poking. Um, ranting is definitely going to be negative, saying negative things. Inveigling is actually negative. So we might want to hang on to that. That's likely a word that maybe you're not comfortable with. Invective is another one of those words that people aren't always comfortable with. I know I'm, I wasn't always. Speculating is what I might call more neutral. pretty neutral. And if we can get to the fact that we're like, okay, that's really negative and saying something against their record. And we're talking about somebody who's willing to say very negative things that would likely help us eliminate speculating. Although it could be a good fit in general, like speculating about their record. It doesn't necessarily fit with that like deep negative that we're getting from the rest of the sentence. Now, the next would be trying to understand the words in, con like in context. And this is gonna be a little bit of like idiomatic choice. So I do encourage you, especially when it's a word that you definitely don't know and you definitely never see used, to practice writing or at least reading some sentences that use that word so that you can start to hear it in context. But like needling someone, we wouldn't needle against something. We would just needle them directly, like needling this person, right? Like it just, it, it doesn't quite fit in the connection with like needling against. And inveigling against doesn't either. In fact, inveigling means to try and like get yourself in the door, right? Sort of like not in a positive way, mind you, but to try and get yourself in the door. And so the only answer choice that connects to this idea that invective would be really her speech is this word ranting. So 
here's partly why the vocab piece of this is so important because the GRE is really mathematical. It talks about people inclined to harsh speech. And so it, it's gonna connect back to this idea of harsh speech. So our correct answer on this one is gonna be D, ranting. Now, I would not be surprised, and I chose this question on purpose, um, that many of you have some words on this word list, uh, like in these five answer choices, or even ubiquitous or invective, that are words that you don't feel super comfortable with. There are a ton of word lists out there. We've got one, there are some, some good ones from other reputable companies online. I would be really careful um, just like downloading random word lists from places you've never heard of. But there are a fair number of like really quality word lists out there. I would also say that start to pull your word list, like the words you wanna study from the questions that you do. So if you're working in the official guide, pull vocab words from the official guide. You should also be making these same word lists from neutral terminology and reading comprehension. But you're not gonna be tested on something that's um, very specific to one field. Right? So you'll probably read reading comp passages that are very scientific. But like the big scientific Latin formal sort of language, like you're not going to see that in a vocab base, but reading comp passages will use dense vocabulary words. So as you run into vocab words, I'm a much bigger proponent of making flashcards as I run into these words. Right? Start with a nice little word list, but then build. And so I just want to give a plug against the sort of traditional pre-made downloaded from somewhere flashcards. Because at the end of the day, they are in fact just harder to learn. They might be just like you print them out and all as well, but you will have to look at them so many extra times to try and learn the word. And even then your understanding would be what we would consider like shallowly encoded. So it won't take much for you to forget them. They will need not just a lot of repetition to remember them, but then you'll have to keep seeing them all the time because it's easy to keep forgetting. So we're gonna use the word inveigle. Like this will be the word that we're, I'm gonna show you what I think about flashcards. So you can go to Google and Google pulls from, I can't remember if it's like Miriam Webster or who they pull from, but they pull from like reputable dictionary, right? So if I go to Google and I just type in inveigle definition, this is what pops up, right? It's gonna give me pronunciation in a way that most of us don't know how to interpret. So good news, you can actually click on the little button and it'll let you hear the word, which I think is important. It is important that we hear what the word sounds like because it can help us build memory tricks around it. It's then gonna give you information like the part of speech. And since I actually initially Googled inveigling, it told me that that is in fact the gerund or present participle version of it. And if your eyes are like rolling into the back of your head, that's totally normal because that doesn't seem useful to me either. We then get two different definitions and I'll let you guys give them a read. Um, and then we've got some words that are basically their version of a uh, thesaurus, right? Some synonym. So let's take a moment to read this. I want you to think about this, the meaning of this word in vagal. All right, so I would say that the definition isn't the most ridiculous definition I've ever read, but it's certainly also not the best I've ever read. But a lot of us get tempted to just straight up copy it onto the back of a card or to get a card that's kind of pre-made this way. So maybe we write inveigle, inveigling, and I write the word gerund. I have no idea why because it's not helpful, but maybe I do, I write it down. And then I write the definition, persuade someone to do something by means of deception or flattery. And then I write the sentence they gave me. We cannot inveigle him into putting pen to paper. I don't even notice that that sentence is meaningless to me. And then I write the second definition, gain entrance by persuading. And then I write another sentence. Jones had inveigled himself into her house. I'm like, okay, that one at least is a little bit more logical, but it's so boring. I don't know that I would ever remember it. I don't know that I would ever remember it. Right. So if this is my flashcard, 
the number of times that I'm going to have to keep studying it and studying it and studying it and studying it to try and get comfortable with memorizing these definitions is going to be arduous. What I'd rather do is come up with something punchy. Okay. So I'm going to make a rich and memorable flashcard. And it's going to start with the front of the flashcard. As soon as I see inveigle, I want to think negative. And so I'm going to turn it bright red. So it might be with like a big red circle, a red highlighter, or I might write it in red ink. And I want to do this for a lot of words, right? So anytime there's a clear tone to a word, I want to turn it either red for negative, green for positive, or I'll use black or blue for neutral. So notice these three words, infamous, notable, and acclaimed. And I want you to think for a moment, would you make them all like blue or black because they're all neutral? Are any of these words you would make red for being negative or green for being positive? And then type in the chat room, what do you think? What would you, what colors would you use for these words? So are any of these positive? Are any of these like pretty definitively positive? So acclaim, notable, infamous. Nice, I love it. I've got a couple in the background. Acclaimed is something positive, right? You, be, you are acclaimed for doing good things. You are infamous, however, for doing bad things. Notable could kind of go either way, right? It could be neutral, it could be positive, it could be a little negative. Um, but we have two that have a very clear tone, right? Acclaimed is gonna be used for positive things. Infamous would be notable or famous for doing bad things, right? Criminals, infamous, Al Capone, infamous. Acclaimed would be you know, Mother Teresa. <laughs> so thinking about the tone, I want to start to make the connection to the word. So when I see the word inveigle or inveigling, I see red. I might also include the word inveigling on the front so that I'm constantly seeing those words together. Now on the back, I'm also going to make a note to whether it's primarily negative or if maybe it could kind of go either way, like negative to neutral. Then what I want to do is I want to get a definition down, but I want to get a definition in my own easy words. And I want to keep it super duper short. So all of this like persuade someone to do something by means of deception or flattery or gain entrance by persuading with deception or flattery. I'm going to write something that like makes sense to me. So convince or sneak in by lying or sucking up. Cool. <laughs> right? Like, I, I like, that's my language. That's my language. But then I'm going to go one step up. And I think this is actually the most important part of the card is I'm going to leave just this plain old Google search and I'm going to look further into this thesaurus. So in the Google search, there's actually a click on arrow that'll let you see an expanded list. And so this thesaurus, or you can pull up your own thesaurus, will have a longer list of words. Apple has a great one that's like native to the machine. It's inside the dictionary app. Like there's a ton. So I'm going to open up my thesaurus and I'm going to start to look for a mix of words that I feel comfortable with that convey this idea of somebody like convincing me to do something, trying to like get their way in somewhere, be invited to a party, but all by sort of like lying to me or trying to like kiss up to me. And so I don't want to pick all the like word, like one synonym. I want to pick a few that kind of get at the different sides of this word. And so for me, words like seduce, right? Like convince me to do something. Words like conning and sweet talking. Um, persuade could be a really good one, right? If you know what some of these other words mean, coax or ensnare, you can grab those too. So you can come up with your own synonyms or you can pull them from the list. And then the other thing I do is when I see synonyms that are words that I think would be GRE words, I don't need to learn them. I'm just going to add them to the card. I'm just going to kind of scribble them in the bottom right corner. 
So that every time I study this card, I just happen to see those words too. Now, when I'm studying this card, the only thing I really need is the synonyms. And again, I might add like persuade, allure, um, and then the simple definition. I want to have a very clear picture in mind of like a couple of words that would exchange for that word and then like a, an easy definition. And the reason why is because on test day, I'm going to be coming up with a prediction for a blank. So the predictions that a lot of you guys were coming up with, like judgment, criticism, right? I'm going to be coming up with a simple word that I know. And then I'm going to be going through a word list of three to six words and trying to match these difficult words to my simple words. And so this connection to the synonym is really important. Then here comes the really, really important part, which is this big old space I left right here for you to come up with a mnemonic. And there are plenty of websites. There's like a mnemonic dictionary. Plenty of places have sentences. I just don't ever want you to copy down a sentence. I want you to think of a story that would, that would use the word inveigle or inveigling. I want you to actually visualize it and write a sentence about it. And, or, right, maybe both, come up with like a fun verbal mnemonic to help you with the word. If you can't always come up with like a short and punchy mnemonic, that's fine. The sentence is a necessity. But for me, in vagal, I always think in wiggle. And I always think of someone who can like wiggle their way into anything. Right? They can like con their way into anything. And so for me, in vagal is like in wiggle every time I see it. <laughs> and that's like the G says it to me every time. Right? And so that's my mnemonic. Now, what I'll do is we're going to go back. I want you to see the sentence they offered, right? Like there's Jones had inveigled himself into her home. I want you to write your own version of a sentence. I want you to type it in the chat window too, but I want you to write one thinking about inveigle, inveigled, or like inveigling is inveigling his way into something or her way into something or its way, the dog, whatever. I want you to visualize somebody like trying to like sweet talk or con their way into getting you to do something or into trying to be let in somewhere. Okay. So you're going to write your own sentence and imagine exactly what the person looks like, exactly what the person is wearing and the kind of like mannerisms that they would have while they are trying to get you to let them in or you know, like get you to do something. And then why don't you type in the chat window and share them with all of us so we can see what your sentence is. I love this. I love Lucian said, my child inveigled me into buying another silly beanie baby when we went grocery shopping last time. And you can like envision it. The woman in the black veil inveigled herself into the wedding without an invitation. I love that one, right? I can see like in a black veil inveigled herself in. That's fantastic, right? You write this, you make a flashcard that looks like this. Sure. It's going to take you three to four minutes to make the flashcard you'll do the flashcard twice and you'll never forget that word. Like, I promise you that the, the woman in the black veil inveigled herself into the wedding without an invitation. You guys will probably never forget the word inveigle now. So this is awesome, right? This is what I wanna do. I wanna find words and I wanna come up with like really rich, memorable flashcards because memorable flashcards will stick with me, okay? So what they're gonna be, is simple word on the front, pick a color. You're gonna go with simple synonyms and definition. Again, positive, negative, or like neutral on the back. 
You can throw some connected GRE words like as you bump into them and then add your own mnemonic or creative sentence and like make it really vivid and descriptive, right? Like imagine yourself actually seeing the scenario. The act of coming up with that very like creative and in-depth, like, like a rich sentence is what's going to make this flashcard stick. Right. So those are the pros to this deep encoding. And now we're going to try some more words. And that way we can start to build a vocab list for you guys. Right. So pro here, you're getting very deep encoding. Mnemonics can be extremely helpful. Synonyms help you build the connection to words in the way that you'll be using them on test day. You're also going to be able to connect back to tone. So even if your understanding of the words a little fishy or you're not entirely sure it exactly fits the meaning of the sentence, you'll at least know that it's in the right tone. And so maybe don't eliminate it right away. Right? And then if you're starting to put connected GRE words on the back, you're actually starting to build your vocabulary for other words as you review this one. Yeah. So doing this, you won't have to review nearly as often. Okay. So now we'll try a couple more. We're going to do another single blank TC. And so I want to give you a little bit of my like lowdown on how the paper should look. So when I've got a single blank TC, um, let's say this is question number two, right, on the test. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write down two and then I'm going to draw a single underline because this only has the one underline. And now it's got five possible answer choices. So a single blank will always have five. You'd be able to see the answer choices on test. So I'm going to write A, B, C, D, E on my paper. Now I use the question number because that way if I skip this question and come back after I've made some eliminations, I do want to see the work I've already done. And so I would like to be able to return to it. But I give myself this single blank because I want to actively try to come up with a word that's going to fit into that blank. So let's try the steps one and two again. I want you to take a moment. I want to make sure that you're clear on what the whole sentence means. And then in the chat window, I want you to predict what word, like simple word, do you think would fit that blank? All right, so start giving them to me. Although it appeared to be something after its stagnation and eventual cancellation, this TV show returned to the BBC in 2005, becoming the longest running sci-fi show in history. Yeah, I love, okay, I've got a couple in the back. Although it appeared to be gone forever, <laughs> lost, canceled, right? Like done, right? I love this, right? Simple words. So we're going to go with something nice and simple, right? Unused, terminated. Yeah, I love all this. So we've got this like dead, terminated, done for, relegated to the rubbish bin. Right? Like all of these are, are perfect. Now what we'll do is once I have my prediction, and by the way, the like gone forever that someone predicted is fantastic. Done for, also fantastic. It, a prediction doesn't have to be a single word. It could be a group of words or it could be just an idea in mind. Then we'll get to see our blanks. And so send me your thoughts. Which of these do you think is the correct?
Nice. Okay, so we've got some tempting words on this one. We've got some tempting words. So we know that it's going to be something like not good, not good. So, you know, this idea is like it, it, it appears like it's going to be dead and gone. So what we want to do is get rid of any words that like just really don't make sense. So words like sated, meaning like satisfied or filled, doesn't make any sense. As long as we know what it means. Sated doesn't make any sense. Unflagging is also sort of the opposite. It means like full of energy, right? Like I can't be tired. I cannot be dropped down. And so that's another one that's positive. We've also got this idea of ascendant. Think about ascend, going up some stairs, ascended the stairs. So also the opposite. So now we're down to everybody on, everybody that sent one in, sent in either lackluster or defunct. Right, lackluster or defunct. And these are both great because they are in fact both negative. They are in fact both negative words. The question then is how do we decide which one it's gonna be? So lackluster really does mean like dull. It lacks luster. Luster meaning a shine or a sheen or a shimmer. And so it is lacking in that lustrous appearance. And so it's boring. It's dull. Right. And it being dull might have been the thing that made it right. Resulted in the cancellation. Yeah. And I agree. It's, it's, it's sort of uninspired, right? It's just not strong enough here. Lackluster might be the cause of this cancellation, but lackluster isn't what we're going to see it as after all this. We need something much more negative. And so this idea of defunct, meaning just like completely done for dead, irrelevant, useless, right? Like broken um, is a much better fit here. And so while lackluster is in the right vein, it's a lot, it's definitely too neutral. It's definitely too neutral. So you'll grab any words from this. Like, oh, I didn't really know what ascendant means. All right, or uh, sated. I wasn't sure about sated. That's a word that a lot of folks, sated comes from words satisfied, satiated. Right? That same idea is like full. All right, we're going to do a couple more. This time though, we get two blanks. Okay, so imagine this is question three. For question three, I'll put two blanks. Oh, you know, I've never used that. Daniel asked a really great question, which is like, there's a trick where if the word before the blank is an, then you know the word in the blank has to start with, I mean, it would have to fit the sentence versus like as a versus as an. Hmm? So like an elephant, a car, right? so vowels. I've never used that trick before. Hmm. I'll have to keep an eye out for it. Danielle, I will credit you if that becomes a trick that I use. I'll be, I'll probably credit you for that one. All right, so we're gonna try this. We're gonna come up with a prediction for both of these blanks. I want you guys to type them to me in the chat window. What do you think these two blanks might be? I love what I'm seeing so far. So fearful is being seen as something. They took great pains to include some other kind of voices in its monthly newsletter. And I love the first one, they're afraid of being seen as something. So there's definitely something negative. So I would certainly want to write like there's a negative here. So fearful being seen seen as very something, they made sure to include maybe different voices, a variety of voices, or it could be a word that directly kind of points back to the first blank. So this is one of those cases where my second blank might not make sense to me until I figured out exactly what the first blank is. 
because whatever it is they're worried about would be sort of defining what kind of voices they should be including. That said, this direction of like kind of cause could go the other way. So often when we have two or three blanks, one of them will be easier. And what makes them easier isn't the vocabulary. One of them will be easier to sort of peg for what its meaning is. So in this case, I know that the first one is something that this Bieber Appreciation Society is worried about being seen as. So I'm gonna go into the answer choices. Right. And see which of these would be negative. So I wouldn't want to be seen as, well, an enthusiast doesn't quite fit. An enthusiast doesn't quite fit. So now I've got detractors and toadies. What do you guys think? Detractors and toadies. And this might be a thing where you're like, wait, I don't know what that word means. So show of hands, how many of you guys are not sure what the word toadies means? Yeah, 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 okay. So here comes secret trick. Do not eliminate something just because you don't know what it means. I, I do a pretty good job, I think, on vocab. And I don't even have a great vocab. How about that? <laughs> I do a really good job on vocab with a limited vocab because I am willing to pick answers that I don't know what they mean. So a detractor would be someone who sort of like chips away at or says something in opposition. And it would be weird that the Bieber Appreciation Society would be seen as detractors, like of themselves, maybe? I don't know. It seems like more that a lot of you guys were saying, like centrist, exclusive, biased, like excluding other people, discriminatory in some way. Um, and you guys are all right, right? Like we're worried about being seen as like too maybe obsessed or like, too insulated. A detractor would be someone who's, right, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I love what I'm, I'm getting some ideas coming in, right? Like, a detractor would not be, a, wouldn't quite fit here. A toady, though, a toady is someone who just follows around without thinking, right? That's like the idea of a toady is someone that just, they don't have a balanced view. Right, like they're just they're just flattery and suck up. Right, this fits back in with our inveigling. Toadies are often inveigling other people. They're big old suck ups. And you think about a toad as just like maybe my card would have like a story of a toad that's just copying the sounds of other toads, trying to get paid attention. And so in this case, toadies would be our word. Okay, so if we're afraid of being seen as some sort of suck up or like brainless followers, then we might want to include voices. So in this case, like Toadie would be like, oh, I think everything about Bieber is amazing. Then I would need to have some voices that shed some of this like suck up language <laughs> that instead of just always agreeing could therefore be critical. And so my second blank is really going to be defined on my first one. Defined on my first one. So you might go ahead and grab, right? Like, let's go ahead and, well, you can, you know, pull up Google or start to write a little index card for yourself that has toadies on it. And if there are other words here, like conciliatory, so think reconcile. Tat them out. These are words that you um, want to pull up. So um, tat amount would mean equal or equivalent to. So tat amount to. It's how we almost always see that word. Conciliatory is positive, meaning trying to reconcile or try get along. So toadies are already trying to get along. I don't need more words to get from them. 
Okay, so now we're gonna take that same thing and we're gonna move it up to a three blank. To a three blank. Okay, so let's try this one. A three blank, again, each blank will only have, so we'll say this is like question number four. Each blank will only have four, three answer choices. So, you know, my question number four has one blank, two blanks, three blanks, and each blank is gonna have three choices. It gets more and more important that I am able to understand the main idea of the entire paragraph. So I need to start to read around the blanks more. So I'm not trying to predict the blanks on my first pass through. I just want to understand what in the world the sentence is trying to say. Okay, so we've got a, a dense sentence here. First half and the second half are being separated by a semicolon. And a semicolon means that on both sides of this thing, they should agree, that they're connected. And the first half of this is a very short section with two blanks in it, which might make it really hard to figure out what those blanks should say. So the university president argued that top universities should not something education as an academic something. I have, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea what to go in those two. Um, but the second half of the sentence after the semicolon is actually a pretty long sentence with only one blank, which means it might be easier to figure out what goes there. And then from this second half of the sentence, that better understanding can get us a good understanding so that prediction of the first half is possible. So university president argued that top universities shouldn't do something, right? Discouraging our brightest students from pursuing teaching careers does a disservice to the next generation of students by something them of the opportunity to learn from the cream of the crop. So it seems to sound like if we get our best students, if we stop them from becoming teachers, then future generations won't have amazing teachers, right? I do want some of the best and brightest students to go into industry and to go into innovation and what have you. But I also want some of these brightest students to teach the next generation of brightest students. So it seems like, okay, that's what this sentence is trying to say. So discouraging our brightest students from pursuing teaching careers does a disservice to the next generation by taking from them the opportunity to learn from the cream of the crop. So I'm stealing, right? Like I'm keeping from them these great teachers that would have been their teachers if I had encouraged that. So I'm gonna go into the answer choices just for the third blank. And I'm gonna see if I can find a word that fits. And some great ones you guys gave, which were denying, get rid of, eliminate. And so I'm looking for an answer choice that best fits the word denying. And now several of these are words you may wanna be making a flashcard for. So denigrating is really negative, right? Denigrating is extremely negative. It means like belittling and defaming. 
And we're not trying to say that that's what we're doing. We're like taking it away from them. We're not like calling them awful things. We're not calling them awful things. And degenerating would mean to like deteriorate or damage or decline. And that doesn't quite fit either. To divest is the opposite of invest, right? So to invest would be to give them. To divest would be to take away. So our meaning of the sentence does in fact make sense that what we're trying to show is that if we discourage our brightest students from pursuing these teaching careers then future generations will we'll have that the access to best and brightest taken away from them. So now I've got to figure out what the first half of the sentence needs to say to help support that same meaning, right? So we've got divesting. So the university president argued that top universities should not do something in terms of education as an academic maybe choice. So what we want to say is that universities should encourage education as an academic you know, choice. They want to encourage people to take up education, teaching others. And so now I've got they should not, oh, there's going to be a double negative here. Now, if you ever struggle to figure out what the words are going to be, but you understand the big picture, then you can actually go into the blanks. If you don't understand the big picture, don't go into the blanks. But if you understand the big picture, the university president argued that top universities should not disdain education, should not prescribe education, and should not circumvent education. Now, if they disdain, that would be speaking negatively, they shouldn't disdain education as an academic recommendation, tome, or discipline. This second blank might be easier to figure out. We wouldn't call something an academic recommendation. And a tome is like a, a large book, typically. And so if we think about education as like a discipline, a thing that people go to learn, then that would make the most sense here. So I want to encourage education as a discipline. So I should not discourage education as an academic discipline. And so the only one here, proscribe wouldn't work out, right? Like this idea of like banning it we shouldn't ban education, that's too strong. Circumvent would be to go around education. We're just saying that they shouldn't like undermine it or talk badly about it. In that case, disdain works best here. Notice that there's no way I could have done these blanks in order. It wouldn't have happened <laughs> because I would never have been able to figure out the first two. And even then I couldn't do the first one before the second one. The second one was easier to me than the first, and the third was either, easier than either of them. So if I have multiple blanks, I absolutely can and should try and choose for the easiest blank first. All right, we have one final of the vocab base. So I just wanted you to see kind of a sentence equivalent. So sentence equivalents, and let's say this is question like number 12, sentence equivalents always has six answer choices so instead of five. I'm going to do my single blank and then I'm going to write A, B, C, D, E, F. And my job for these is to choose two words. So I'm not just picking one word for this blank. I'm going to, from the answer results, I'll have to pick two. That said, I'm still just going to pick the one synonym. So floodwaters had already breached the library's walls, meaning they've already made it through the library, library's walls. But hopeful volunteers in hip boots work tirelessly to do something about the damage. They're hopeful, they're volunteering to help, they're trying to stop the water. They must be in there working tirelessly to stave off, <laughs> to hold off the damage, to protect the library from, right? And so any of these words that might've jumped out at you as a word. So, you know, hold off or protect against, control. I love this, like minimize, mitigate. I'm seeing a lot of people say mitigate. Now what I want to do is I want to find two words, two words that would absolutely fit, right? I love this limit, control. Those are also great as well. So now I need to find two words that help this idea of tirelessly to reduce, prevent, hold off. 
So we've already got mitigate for folks in the in the chat would already gave me that one. I now need a second word that means mitigate. Means to hold off. What is another word that means to mitigate? Yeah, looking good. You guys looking good. Nice folks, nice. So our words here are in fact mitigate and forestall. So you can think about like stall, but like in advance for stall, just like holding back, limiting. To bolster or to exacerbate would both be to like increase or support. To abase would be to say something negative about, would, you know, humiliate, which doesn't make a lot of sense here. Um, and to flummox would be to confuse. And so we do have another pair. So we have our correct pair here, which is mitigate and forestall. We have an opposite incorrect pair of sorts that would be exacerbate and bolster. And then we have these two one-offs, a base and flummox don't have a match at all. So any answer choices for sentence equivalents, there is a little bit of a cheat you can use. Answer choices that don't have a partner, that don't have a match can't be the correct answer. So good news, in this case, it would either be mitigate and forestall or exacerbate and bolster. We want the volunteers to help reduce, stem, limit the damage. And so the only ones that would work here would be our mitigate and forestall. Nice, you guys. So nice, folks. So I'm gonna put back up for you my great, like loved flashcard. I want to encourage, cause I know it's hard. It's so easy to just like pull flashcards down from websites and just go nuts. But I promise you, if you can commit to making your own flashcards, overall, you will take far less time and you will learn so many more words that much more quickly. In fact, what does inveigle mean again? Without even looking, can you remember the story? Can you visualize? I can visualize the story of the woman in the, like in the black veil who snuck her way into a wedding without an invitation. I can see that. In wiggle. Yeah, exactly. In wiggle. To persuade, to like sneak in, to use lies and and flattery to get yourself in good graces with someone. And there you go. All right, well, if you have any questions, I'm happy to stick around, but thank you guys for coming to the free pep hour. As a reminder, any of our session ones, so for any of our upcoming courses, you can join our first session for free at manhattanprep.com forward slash GRE forward slash classes. Um, you can also come to our main website at just manhattanprep.com under GRE or GMAT, depending on what test you're looking at. You can then pull up free resources of which our classes, our free prep hour, and all kinds of other stuff that are available. Thanks, you guys, so much. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I am excited to see how the future is. I appreciate Lara telling us that the future is gonna be great from UAE. So tomorrow's gonna to be a lovely day. I know it here on the East Coast in the United States. <laughs> Thanks to everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. And um, we'll see you soon.